Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can do to help us understand all these things, and how we might all work together to build the best world possible for all beings, human or non-human alike. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy. I'm an amateur ufologist. I have a degree in philosophy. I'm the creator of HiveOne.net. I'm the author of a book called Revolutionary Mindfulness. That's about meditation and activism. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week, I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, a meditation teacher, and an experiencer with many stories and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now, on to the show. All right, we are back with another episode of Meditation and Aliens. Hope everyone's doing great out there. How are you doing, Doro? Oh my goodness. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing good. My mind is kind of... uh, exploding because i've gone down some different rabbit holes i found oh, some goody things. i love that <laughs> i found some interesting new resources of information that uh that i'm looking forward to telling you about okay so should we just jump in, into it i'm i'm ready to jump yeah if you are okay so over the last couple of weeks i think we've talked a bit about this i think last week i played some clips from some of the the uh, big figures, whistleblowers in ufology, particularly about uh, Bob Lazar and Area 51 and Element 115, and uh, you know, so we sort of we played clips from Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, David Grush, um, and I'm starting to get a really clear picture that really differentiates these different figures in ufology because I'm. Cause I'm really searching for the truth, which I know you are too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's but dig. Just wanting to understand what is going on. If these UFOs flying around are real, then, then there has to be a deep and long detailed true story of what they are, where they came from, who's flying them. And it seems that there's a, there's a controlled disclosure group that is controlled by the U S government or some part of the U S government. Um, I mean, I guess the way I now see it is it's clear. The secret keepers have been in control of the Pentagon and the CIA and the air force for a long time. Yeah. What, what is unclear now is who is currently in control of the Pentagon and the CIA and the U S government, because there's enough people in Congress, Schumer, Senator Schumer, Senator Rounds, um, Burchett, Luna, Gates, AOC, they are all on the side of dis- of some sort of controlled disclosure. It seems Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, David Grush, Ryan Graves, Alex Dietrich, um, uh, Galladay, the Rear Admiral Galladay, they are all on um they are all pushing for a type of controlled disclosure, but it's you can kind of tell that they are a very limited controlled disclosure under strict orders of what can be released and what cannot because the litmus test issue is Bob Lazar yeah. and Element 115 and anything really exotic like what are the aliens? What types of aliens are there? What Are, are there greys, reptilians, mantids? None of them will touch those topics. No. <laughs> so so you sort of put these controlled disclosure agents on one side because um, and now you sort of look who is actually trying to tell the full truth of everything they know without restriction and just like going for it like you and I are. I think that would be Stephen Greer. What do you think? I mean, you know, yeah. but I'm guessing. Yeah, Stephen Greer is definitely he's he's a little he, I put him in a little bit of a gray zone because there are a few red flags I have about Greer, but he's he definitely seems to spill the beans on all sorts of stuff none of these other people will talk about so i put him in i think he might be still kind of um you know teamed with the uh u.s government or with somebody 
I don't, I, but I, I mean, I don't 100% trust Greer, but he definitely talks about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so he's in a gray zone. I put actually George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell in a gray zone. One, because they have talked extensively about Bob Lazar and they, but they seem to be in sort of this gray zone also. And Ross Coldheart uh, from UK or not UK, Australia. I put him in a gray zone. Hmm. What was his name again? Colt Hart. Colt, Colt Hart. Okay. Colt Hart. Yeah. I think I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. But a, a really interesting character is Daniel Sheehan. Um, because he is a, he's a civil rights um, attorney, uh, really amazing activist attorney. And he represented Greer's Disclosure Project. And he also represents Lou Elizondo. Hmm. And, he, and he's been making the rounds. I actually uh, saw him in person at an event that had been in Las Vegas, but I didn't talk to him. But he's been making the rounds and he's been spilling the beans on stuff nobody else will talk about. Like he's actually said on the news... He said when when pressed, who is really controlling stuff? He mentioned the word Majestic 12, MJ 12, which is a that is a rabbit hole of a topic leading to this whole concept of a secret world government. Wow. So when he drops that, that is almost like saying Lou Elizondo and Stephen Greer both are making a nod towards MJ 12 being a real story, which uh, that's led me down the rabbit hole to some of these other people I'm going to bring up. Um, but also Daniel Sheehan has gone ahead and listed the aliens that he believes exist. And See, this is amazing because he is an attorney, right? He's yeah. not some kind of a Joe out in the field. I mean, he's, he's a real attorney. So he's a big time attorney he's okay. a, he's involved in the Iran Contra affair, the Pentagon papers. He's been fighting the government and the deep state for years to get wow. the truth out about stuff. Um, and he's founded this in, thing called the new paradigm Institute. And they're actually, uh, and he's talking, he's a real intellectual, um, and he comes from, uh, what is it, the, uh, it's a religious order, not the Catholic, it's a part of the Catholic, it's the. Uh, um, uh, I'm bad at that too, I mean, I go straight to Rosicrucians, but I don't know. It's, uh, it, it'll come back to me, but it's an yeah. intellectual part of the Catholic, um, the Catholic order. But he um, he is he is actually pushing to get academia to really study ufology and the history and what's going on with aliens. What are their agendas? What policies do we need to put in place? And so he's launching four uh, courses uh, to, to try to, like, invite people to start studying this in an academic way. And the courses um, I could look them up here, but they're basically like the the history of this and they, they get into the depth uh, theory theoretical depths of this and they're starting in uh the end of this month the first one and he's he's doing the first two and each one is like four weeks costs like two hundred dollars and the second and then the second two courses are led by uh this guy richard dolan who is uh you know he's considered a uh one of the most respected longtime researchers of ufology who uh -huh. I had, who I had not really delved into a lot because I found him sort of condescending whenever I heard him speak on interviews. Mm. But as I was comparing what people were saying about Bob Lazar, I, I watched a few of his interviews in more in depth and I realized, oh, this guy is willing to go there. He's willing to explore everything. He's just very he's sort of one of those very conservative intellectuals who's just like keeping his his options open. He's just like it could be this, it could be that, it could be. Yeah. So um, per, give me just for my own brain, um, what is the relationship again between Bob Lazar and Daniel Sheehan? Well, that, there's no relationship. That okay. I know yeah. There. Right. Got it. The only Bob Lazar has a relationship with Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp years and mm. years relationship. I'm not aware of Sheehan ever actually uh, talking or having a connection to Bob Lazar. Got it. And I don't, think Sheehan's never gone yeah I don't think he's ever said anything about Bob Lazar and element 115 so he's kind of participating in the controlled disclosure you know hesitancy on that but Richard Dolan definitely Richard Dolan I went ahead and found that Richard Dolan has published multiple books huge books covering the history of this whole topic and uh, two of them cover the history of it and one is called uh, something called like alien agendas the more recent one and i've been scanning through all three of these 
and they hit everything. They hit Majestic wow. 12. They hit Bob Lazar. Every He goes into every type of alien, just like Sheehan does. And that sort of seems makes sense why Sheehan and him are the ones that are creating this these four academic courses. Because in Dolan's book, he talks about the greys, everything we know about them based on abduction stories and the most credible stories he's found. And are they related to the mantids, did he say? Oh, he talks about the mantids in there. He okay. says when the mantids, uh, there are many stories where the mantids are with other extraterrestrials like the greys and the, the short greys and the tall greys. And he says whenever the mantids are with uh, uh, the greys, the mantids always seem to be in charge. Wow. So there's like a deferential thing there, a power uh, or a respect thing, like they're an older race or something. Interesting. And he talks about reptilians and he talks about, um, you know, that, you know, some of the stories and, and uh, I mean, he talk, he mentions a really credible military story where these uh, witnesses were abducted and they saw reptilians or a reptilian walking with military officers side by side at like an equal stature in um, at a base. And so that wow. was kind of like curious. And, and um, so remind me again, his position, Dolan, what is his actual position? He's a UFO ufology researcher. He's, okay. he's just sort of an intellectual that's been writing books and studying this, analyzing the data for years. And he seems to have a really, um, you know, he's actually he seems to have a really skeptical intellectual mind and he's he's not. And it, I think it's been hard for him to take this stuff seriously. He sort of described how it's really it really shocks your worldview. It really shocked his worldview about what is really going on with the U.S. And so I think it's it's been hard for him to come to grips with what he's everybody. Been yeah, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> so these these four courses uh, that she and, and Dolan are going to do, I'm going to just take them and are you and so the first four the first one is 200 each of them are 200 each, each of them been? is uh yeah 200 dollars. okay and they're online maybe i'll just like pull up the new paradigm institute and just like give a quick uh read of what the the new paradigm are. institute i'm gonna check that yeah. out so the first one is february 29th um through March 21st, four weeks, and it's the facts, history, law, and politics of UFO, UAP with Daniel Sheehan. Uh, facts, history, and law, uh, politics of UFO and UAP with Daniel Sheehan, that's one. And then he's gonna do a second part of that course, another four-week course, and it's uh, the first one says, the four-week course will provide a comprehensive history and overview of UAP development with a focus on what we can take as facts concerning the most closely held secret in history, after nearly 80 years of cover-up and manipulation mm. of the publicly available information, the most important thing for all of us is to understand what the actual facts are. And the, oh. the second one, um, is the second course, uh, let's see, and to provide a solid foundation for future learning about UFO and UAP and ET issue. And these two courses are core courses that every student needs to take along with Richard Dolan's two courses in order to complete a certificate and enter the ET studies program jointly offered by the new paradigm Institute and ubiquity university. And you're going to do it. Oh, I'm going to, I'm totally going to it, it, one. It'll be an amazing <laughs> way to meet other people that are really trying to delve into this. And, and just by skimming Dolan's book, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I don't know anything. This Dolan, he, he, in his books, there are so many stories. I mean, so many like credible stories going going way back. He he goes, you know, he, he goes back to some ancient stories of um in you know like the fifteen hundreds of intellectual oh really intellectual in Italy yeah that had an encounter that he wrote down everything he talked about with the aliens. I could even like um maybe for a future episode I could pull that up. But he had a very interesting philosophical discussion or this uh this uh, a well-recorded philosophical discussion back from ancient times wow. with aliens um i'm gonna look just up his book of... so it's alien agenda is that it what was his first name again dolan richard dolan richard mm -hmm. yeah richard okay. dolan and let's see the three books i got of his one is called ufos for the 21st century wow. the definitive guide to the ufo mystery and then it's the next one is uh, UFOs and the national security state. 
chronology mm -hmm. of the cover up from 1941 to 1973. And uh, he has a he's another one that goes and maybe that the the first one I mentioned goes from 1973 closer to the present. And then the one that but is really fun is the alien agendas, a speculative analysis of those visiting Earth. And, you know, it uh, they, they that their story goes really deep into the different types of aliens and what they're about. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and he so he's teaching the, the, the two courses after the those first two. And the first Richard Dolan course is called UAP and National Security State with Richard Dolan. Um, okay. So it's going to, it says this four week course will cover the two volume book Dolan has written on UFOs and the national security state, which details year by year, beginning in 1945, the number of UFOs cited. We will also dive into the evidence gathered, the cover ups engaged in by the US and other governments, the people marginalized and persecuted for insisting on the reality of UFOs. Finally, we will discuss the inexorable momentum towards UFO disclosure. Oh my goodness! I am so tempted. I am oh, yeah. so I, tempted to to do this with you. Wow! Oh, I I I think you're you know, I I, I think you will uh, be very tempted. <laughs> and also, wouldn't that be so fun if we're taking this? We're going deep. We'll be meeting people in these class. We'll get to ask these, Daniel Sheehan and Dolan, you know, directly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That'd be wild. Let me just I'm gonna just get his this. book. I'm gonna can I share my screen to show his book? Because I've got it up on my screen here. Sure. So that's that's his one book, The Alien Agendas, the Speculative Analysis of Those Visiting Earth. Oh, I've got to listen to that. Crazy. Yeah, I've just been skimming them. Okay. All right. Well, I got some homework to do here. <laughs> <laughs> the the last the Final course they have offered is Aliens Agenda After Disclosure with Richard Dolan. And that's uh, that one's starting in May. These are sequential, so you can just take each one. And that Aliens Agenda one says this four-week course looks at speculations Dolan and others who have made concerning who the aliens are, what they are doing here, why they came, how they are perceiving humankind. The course will also speculate on human affairs after disclosure, which is a subject of Dolan's recent books, After Disclosure with Alien Agendas. Oh my. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um And they and they have lot these these uh, are like what Zoom classes and they're recorded in case you can't make a class. How's it? Yep. Structured? It seems that's what yeah, they're uh they're going to have they're going to have these four live courses and then they, each one is recorded so you can just Nice. watch them after. And like they're trying to build this up to create, you know, acad full academic masters and PhD programs. Um that universities can, you know, model after these. So it's, which is what oh, we need. We, we need the brains on earth to really start talking and thinking about this. And every academic subject needs to start, especially history and politics needs to start revising everything it's teaching to integrate. I totally agree. I also think, you know, we, we need to, not just academically, but we need to, I think, accept the fact that that these, these, tech, these uh, consciousness levels of consciousness these aliens that ex that uh reside in these different levels of consciousness multi-dimensional they are communicating with us i don't know how they're going to study that in college that would be interesting well they're i mean they're communicating can... telepathically well i mean i think you just you just got to study you got to study those stories that people have told about how they've communicated with aliens they've got to start studying telepathy They've yeah. got to start studying meditation, yeah, doing experiments, and <laughs> I mean that's one thing I found in in Dolan's book very quickly when he talked about these aliens. He's like every single alien species seems to have telepathy. It seems yeah. to absolutely right be a real phenomenon. Yes, so I find that interesting that that um, this might go to to the higher academic level. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be challenging. Because they have to look at telepathy seriously, you know. Um, yeah. So that's going to be a challenge for universities. Mm -hmm. I think so far they've just, you know, looked at it with kind of, you know, doubt and not able to prove it. So they can't really believe it. So, yeah. And, and again, it just the, you know, I don't know what is more 
shocking and powerful. The realization that our that the U.S. government may be a, a sham that's been run by some secret uh, secret group and hiding so blatantly hiding this UFO and alien secret for so long. Or, I mean, that's shocking enough. But then, then you have if telepathy is real and the aliens are been here the whole time and they can use telepathy and and potentially like go through walls and come into our homes anytime. I mean, that is like that could, could so easily be so terrifying for people and just make them not feel safe in their own mind. Yeah, yeah, it could be terrifying. But, you know, it makes me wonder, is this is this where we have to go? We have to just get used to just, you know, <laughs> being being spied on in our brains. I mean, not only aliens, but, you know, Google and everything else. Who knows? Uh, um, what's your thought on that? How, what do you feel about this idea that we might be not only just watched, but we might be influenced in our thoughts, you know, and and our actions well i i think about it all the time yeah. um i've uh another rabbit hole i've been going down is uh youtube videos where they are interviewing uh priests who are experts in exorcism and they've been Ooh. telling because it you know i suddenly realized well in watching them you very quickly start to realize mm, this this seems to potentially just be aliens again you know the the priests they they describe how a person can seemingly get controlled, taken over by a an entity, and they describe how they um, their experiences, and they describe how they get these entities out of people, and then people can sometimes just go on and live happy lives. And it's and, and now it's it's set within the framework of their Catholic belief system. Yeah, but but the things they describe to me just seems to be describing a phenomenon that seems related to this same thing, the same thing we're describing with aliens in some way. Wow. And their ability to do telepathy and, and um, get inside of people's brains in a hostile sort of takeover with sometimes apparently really malicious intent. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I just found that the story's fascinating and you know, I'm just, you know, it's like, and trying to understand what could be going on here. Like what, who would those aliens be that are uh, getting into people's minds seemingly? Well, this is one thing that um, comes up and again and again, and I could play a, a clip here from another, but it might come up in this clip I'm planning on playing later in this, but this thing about free will and there being really strict laws that the aliens have to follow and that they they cannot violate the free will of a person and and right. this it seems to come up and again and again that they even though they have telepathy and can get into your mind it just you, you just hear it in these different stories that if you order them out even many of these abduction stories there's this this um, this continuing theme that if you actually say no uh, I don't want to go with you. They have to let you go. Right. Like there's, they, they somehow like convince yeah. you. Yeah. They kind of like gaslight you or manipulate you the same way sort of, you know, really predatory humans do in relationships and they mm -hmm. get you to a consent to them coming into your mind or touching your, you physically or taking you somewhere. You have to kind of agree or at least not object. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be, to come up with um, these stories of exorcism that people have these uh, these hostile beings get into their brains because they some part of them agrees to it, like in terms of a trade. Sometimes it can be like as the beings offer to help a person get money or some other thing they want in life. So it's kind of like a trade off that they're agreeing to. Mm. It's almost you know like a deal with a a genie almost type of thing. Or I mean, in Christian they would call it a demon. But, Isn't um, that interesting? Yeah. yeah. But no, some, I mean, a lot of times this is completely unconscious, right? Yeah. I mean, it can kind of, I think it can kind of be subtle and yeah, I imagine it can be unconscious. I mean, if you just don't ever say no and say, get out of my brain, you may not realize you have that option of yeah. 
that. Yeah, I, I think we do. We need to put up some kind of a, you know, this, it stops here. You know, this is my safety bubble here. Don't, don't pass. Um, so yeah, that, that's, can, that's something to really look at because the whole psychic phenomena is going to put everybody into question. I mean, who else is in my brain, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. when I was, when I was a little kid it, laying in bed, I would, I was at first really scared of vampires and scared of the dark. Yeah. And I started this practice of, um, which I, you know, I learned in Sunday school, how you start a prayer is you, you do the sign of the cross, uh, you know, father, son, Holy spirit as, and then you, you know, put your hands together. So like, you're going to pray. And I started doing that as a child in bed. Whenever I started to get afraid, I would feel like something was coming to, to get me. I would just immediately do that. I would do the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, sign of the cross, and put my hands together to pray. And it was like a protection spell. Hmm. And I did that for years and years. And I almost feel like it's a, you know, I mean, I have these theories that that might there, you know, some of these religions might be connected to different alien groups, and it it might be that um, I don't know. I have this theory that by doing that, I was in a way calling a specific benevolent power. I mean, I was calling God, whatever I conceived of as God, but maybe, or maybe that's enough. Maybe just by like calling God a benevolent God to protect you is the essentially the same as saying to all the malicious entities that could get into your brain, like you're not welcome. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And so I, I almost feel like I did that so much through the early part of my life that I got my brain set off limits to, to hostile entities getting in there. Or maybe I've grown, I've evolved enough that now I'm not as vulnerable to right. hostile. Intrusion. Yeah, I was, I feel the same way. I, I feel like, you know, when I was a kid, I used to have all kinds of experiences and dreams and things, you know, about uh, aliens and UFOs and, it scared me to the point where I just kept saying no, no, no. And I have not experienced anything in 30 years other than some, I think, telepathy. But uh, but that actual fear of they're here and they're around and they're after me. I haven't had any of that for, you know, since I was a kid, basically. Yeah. But I think I put up a big wall. I said, just nope, off limits. Don't don't come near me. So, yeah. I, I felt a very similar thing and I'm I'm sort of like mystified why I'm not afraid at all. Like I am, I am, and let, so like last night I was meditating and I was really sort of like, you know, I was like consciously saying, I would like to know if I can telepathically communicate to connect with anyone. I mean, I'm not inviting you know, these beings like into my brain into, you know, but I'm, I'm really, I am open to some sort of communication. And I was, you know, I was really focusing on it and it, and it's, and I, you know, I do, I like you, I wonder if there is a wall that is there for some reason. I'm not sure if I put it there or if something else put it there, or if I just naturally have a wall that blocks because because if telepathy is as real and as prevalent as it seems, then these telepathic communications need to be flowing all over. We need to be living in a soup of it. There has to yeah. be a soup of telepathic communication <laughs> right now that we're in. And why can't we pick up on it? I heard a great analogy, and that is that we are tuned like a radio, uh, you know, and we're, we have consciously or unconsciously uh, tuned our mind to only a certain frequency and I think when we're kids we're just open to all of it and it's all coming in and over the years we get better at refining which channel we want to listen to <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it blocks out all the other noise uh, it kind of makes sense to me yeah well this this sort of starts to touch on the uh, another person I wanted to bring up today which is a guy named Alex Collier Okay. And uh, his his uh, last name is uh, it's spelled C O L L I E R. Alex Collier, and he's a guy that's been abducted uh, all his uh, all his life, 
Um, and he repeatedly, re what? so abducted Re repeatedly, repeatedly, and telepathic yeah. communication. And um, I'm not sure exactly how I got, but basically, some somewhere I was, you know, I found someone referencing him saying he says he's been abducted by Andromedans his entire life, and they've given him tons of information and history about what's going on. And he's been giving talks and writing about it for years, years. And so hmm. I went and indeed, there's, there's like, ten, you know, tons and tons of hours of videos of this guy talking and, and some books he's written. Oh. And uh, I'm here, I, I'm just, I want to just play a bit of it um, for you. If you want to? Yeah, absolutely. That? Yeah. When World War Two was over. Many of, of those that were involved in the spy network, the intelligent net, network of Germany, including their scientists, were brought to the United States. Many went to Russia. Those that were brought here had information and had dealings with Giza intelligence. So they had a familiarity with the extraterrestrial phenomenon. Now first, there was the OSS. Then the OSS became the CIA. Then Truman created the NSA, the National Security Agency. The NSA is exempt from all laws in the United States unless it is specifically mentioned in the law. Bill Cooper talks about this as well. It's a reality. It's a reality. You pay the bills, but you have no say about anything that they do, none whatsoever. This group right here is your secret government. Clinton is a janitor. He's a puppet because they are in contact with the extraterrestrials, they have the technology, and they have the clout. Because when you take the NSA, which has all this extraterrestrial technology and information, and you couple it with the world bankers, you got a tyranny. You got a tyranny. And that's basically where we're almost at. In the NSA, there are five, four top... Sorry, I'll just pause it there for a moment. Whoa, that was big. Yeah, and so I think I played... I played some. Did I play some Bill Cooper last week? Um, um was it Cooper? Um, I I can't. Did I, you? I've, I don't. I get confused what I've done. But but Bill <laughs> Cooper is um he is a another ufologist who was revealing stuff in the eighties, um and he's was really big at explaining that uh, JFK was killed by the secret keepers that this group Majestic Twelve and the Bilderberg group were the secret true world government running everything he talks about the nsa like this guy yeah. um, but bill cooper claimed all of his information came from he actually saw documents because he said he worked and apparently it's true he worked for naval intelligence and he would review prepared documents to to that would be sent to these secret groups and so he got to read them because he was helping prepare them and then he became a whistleblower so he was bill cooper was claiming he was reading real documents real source material Whoa. This guy Collier, he just claims the Andromedan aliens have told him all this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's amazing! That yeah. is amazing. And so I got. Is, it, is I got it finished? More. Is no, that no, video got, done? Oh okay. no, I got more. I'm gonna play some more. I just wanted to pause it there. Yeah. Because now he talks about the real government that is the real power structure uh, from the NSA, the the National Security Agency, which he it seems to be saying the NSA is really the secret human group that is controlling everything um and it's is that, interesting you mean like the majestic 12 they're the well, core he'll or? break it down here he breaks okay. down these four levels and he says the majestic 12 is actually the lowest level on the totem pole i'm oh, sorry i shouldn't say totem pole on the lowest okay. level on it but here okay. i'm gonna play it wow i say there are five, four top secret levels there's the black monks this group here is the priesthood remember the, the legends of samaria and egypt there was the gods, then there was the priesthoods. The priesthoods went into the masses and made sure that whatever the gods wanted was fulfilled. It was done. Wow. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, yeah. that was. I didn't mean to talk there. So he says the highest level is these black monks. They are the priesthood that were similar to the priesthood in ancient Sumeria and Egypt. And so now he goes further um, below that, play that part. And you've got the rest of us, what we call our government. So he's like the, this, this black, these black monks, this priesthood is above our government. Oh, um, okay. And now, so I'm going to keep playing. 
Washington, D.C., and the military, etc. On and on and on. In the NSA, there are five, four top secret levels. How come the camera is so wiggly? Yes. Yeah. This group here is the priesthood. Remember the, the legends of Samaria in Egypt? There was the gods, then there was the priesthoods. The priesthoods went into the masses and made sure that whatever the gods wanted was fulfilled. It was done. They carried out the format, whatever it was. Okay? That's what the black monks are. It's the new priesthood. I might be playing that a little bit too fast, but uh... it's okay. Then you've got the Blue Moon Unit. The what? Blue Moon oh, Unit. Yeah. Blue Moon Unit. Yeah, okay. so it's like the Black Monks and then the Blue Moon Unit. It's who controls the three military bases on the moon. They were also the same group that established the two colonies on Mars, which are called Adam and Eve. All of that, that went, that's on Mars went there from the moon. And I'll describe how that all happened. Then you've got the Ultra, one unit. Then you have Ultra, two. Now, according to the Andromedans, what we've all, or what many people in the UFO circle believe is MJ-12, being the secret government, it is in fact, according to the Andromedans, Ultra 2. It's the lowest rung of the ladder. And if any of you have ever been in the middle... So that's, that's what I wanted to play. So he goes, there's the Black Monks at the top, yeah. then the Blue Moon Unit, and then, I believe then, Ultra 1 and Ultra 2. And Ultra 2 is the lowest rung on the ladder, and that's MJ-12, Majestic 12. <laughs> And, I see. Well, yeah, and Majestic Twelve is talked about by Daniel Sheehan. He and he is like connected to Lou Elizondo and Stephen Greer. So it takes you down this rabbit hole all the way back to people like Alex Collier, who is claiming there is bases on the moon, bases on Mars right now. And it, I, let me play another uh, clip just to, to you know throw some crazy context in this. This is ex-Israeli space chief saying aliens exist, and he talks about bases on planets. This is from three years ago. Okay. Has the state of Israel made contact with aliens? Well, according to retired Israeli general Professor Chaim Eshed, the answer is yes. Eshed served as the head of Israel's space security program for nearly 30 years, and he says that Israel and the U.S. have both been dealing with aliens for years. Now, to clarify, this by no means refers to immigrants. Eshed is clarifying the existence of a so-called galactic federation, and the 87-year-old former space security chief told Israel's Ynet News that lots of agreements have been made between the aliens and the U.S. to try and research and understand the fabric of the universe. Well, apparently this has all been kept a secret because humanity isn't ready. And if true, it would coincide with U.S. President Donald Trump's creation of the Space Force as a fifth branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. Apparently, Trump knows about the aliens, too. Well, we have our correspondent, Ariel Levin-Waldman, joining us to break down the veracity of this report. So first of all, Ariel, give us a breakdown of the most shocking revelations that Israel's former space security chief has made here. Well, you certainly covered the most shocking ones. The claim made by Professor Chaim Eshed is that we are not alone in the universe, and not only are we not alone, we're not even alone on our own planet. The claim is that we have been visited by extraterrestrial life who have set up a joint base of operations with the United States on Mars, buried beneath the surface. He also claims that astronauts from the United States have been to Mars and are working alongside the extraterrestrials at this Mars base base. This in addition to the claims of a galactic federation, which interestingly enough, echo statements made in 2005 by former Canadian Defense Minister Paul Hellier about visits by extraterrestrials to Earth as well. Very shocking statements, but extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Right. Well, you, you mentioned he talks about the secret underground base on Mars where there are American and alien representatives. I mean, Eshad has a serious background. This is a serious guy. Should we be taking his revelations seriously? All right. Obviously, they're going to say no. Oh, really? They, they say no? Oh. All right. I'll go ahead and play it. Yeah. <laughs> In the absence of such extraordinary proof, it's very difficult to take any of these claims seriously, at least not at its face value. One of the things you have to look at is 
just the laws of physics making things very difficult given the sheer size of space and the lack of okay. any evidence. Okay, I think we can, we can stop there. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard that for this third dimension that we live in, the limit of our reality is the speed of light. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody's kind of agreeing at this point that these uh, extraterrestrial intelligences have gone past that. They, they don't, that's not a problem for them. The speed of light is not a boundary for them, yeah. a limit. So that's how we would travel to Mars. We would go with them. <laughs> they know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here, here I've, I just had this queued up. I got another a clip from uh, Richard Dolan, and he sort of talks about uh, some of the secret government um, things that he says are going on. Is that if I play that? Yeah. Run into, because this is also what I know now, is that I don't think that there's a single central government repository where the UFO secret's being held. I think I think it's outside the purview of the U.S. government. I think all the U.S. government does is provide security detail for the secret on behalf of, of um, corporate and financial power that actually has the information. And who those guys are, I don't. All I can do is guess. But I think some of them probably go to Davos every now and then. They may go to Bilderberg meetings like that crowd. Yes, I think some of those people probably are some of those individuals. Uh, and that all that the U.S. military now does is um, basically serve as their security force. They prevent outsiders from getting in. They prevent taxpayers from learning about the program. They even prevent not just Congress. <laughs> yeah. Congress has no access to this, but they prevent senior DOD officials from having access. Yeah. So that's that's Richard Dolan. Yeah, they better they, they better keep this secret from the taxpayer, right? Because we're paying for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. it's going to change yeah. things. Yeah. So it just seems like, uh, I mean the 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 story that seems to be, you know, having so much thread is that this majestic twelve secret world government threads through the Bilderberg group. And when he says Davos, that's the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Is what he's talking about. And uh yeah. and this Israeli space chief space chief, you know, he's 87 years old, spilling the beans on that there's a base on Mars that ties to what Collier is saying that there is bases on the moon and on Mars right now. Um Bill Cooper said that there's underground joint human alien bases all over Earth. That S4 is one. And that's and that's why, you know, and if that's true, it would make perfect sense why Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, David Grush, Ryan Graves would not legitimize Bob Lazar because that draws attention to Area 51 and S4, which they don't want to, they can't draw attention to that if there's really a underground alien base there. They have to try to not draw attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think people should feel when they hear about all this, that, that there's aliens and they're here and they're maybe influencing us and maybe even influencing our thoughts in our own head? What would you say to people who, who are feeling like shocked about all that? Um. I mean, I just wish I encountered people like that. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Oh, uh, you've been to those <laughs> alien conventions, right? Are they they're around. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I would. I mean, I would say the same thing that I would say to anyone who is like, you know, facing struggles with life. I would say uh, meditation is a great practice, and uh, just learning, just learning, and talking to other people that are also going through the same thing um, of really trying to come to grips with this is, uh, you know, yeah. is talk to people and process it. And I would say, you know, uh, Richard Dolan seems to have a great sort of attitude towards this. And, uh, and actually, you know, Collier, you know, he, he's still doing like weekly, uh, webinars and stuff that people can like, uh, get onto. And he's really old now. Um, but, uh, 
you know, it becomes a very much a, um, you know, he sees this as we are going through some sort of shift. We are about to shift as a society. And there's a little bit of a competition between these alien factions and the human factions, some of which are kind of selfish and malicious. But, you know, but he says there's benevolent aliens that are trying to help us, you know, really, you know, evolve and become a more peaceful, enlightened, less warlike, you know, divided species. They're just not they're not just yeah. like uh, revealing themselves. So I don't know. I'm optimistic that this is all going to play out in a nice way. And I think people just, I think, people you know, the, the way, the way I see it is, is kind of very visual. I'm a very visual person. And, and I see it as since this is all happening interdimensionally and we can't see, you know, but it's all around in the, in the energy plasma formations i mean it's all here but we can't see it and yet i believe that each of our chakras is a portal for communicating so in other words the lower chakra which is uh basically survival fear all that you know scary stuff it's a portal and if you're if you're living in that space and if you are residing in that lower survival fear mentality your portal is open to those influences and the same thing with the second chakra which is more all about you know you know just the the enjoyment of life but to the, it can get to the point of addiction so it's really a lot of struggle um that's where all the addictions are the sexuality the drug addictions everything that you're striving for and and you know, having anxiety about is in the second chakra. And if you're there, that opens that portal for consciousness on that level to influence you. Mm -hmm. And then the third chakra, which is more creative. And the one I aim for is the fourth chakra, which is the heart. So if we can reside in the heart, for the most part, that's a portal. That's a, that is the portal of balance. And I think that's the portal that the uh, extraterrestrials would like to meet us at. That's that's where the good ones, I think, reside, and they can talk to us from there. So that's the way I see it visually. And uh, above and beyond that, you know, fourth chakra, fifth chakra, sixth chakra, seventh chakra. That's that's starts going a little more etheric. So um, so we'll stay in the heart. That's where I would like to to focus energy. Yeah. Well, you know. Um... It, there's i've been listening to collier a ton and he talks a lot about this idea of frequencies and that we're a third like a third frequency uh we live in the third frequency or something that and makes that sense that makes are, sense to me mm -hmm. yeah and he says that we're trying to that some of these aliens live in the fourth or fifth frequency and that's why we can't see them mm -hmm. and he says we are like trying it's like uh part of our evolution is to evolve up and become a fifth or fifth dimension, fifth dimension or frequency, something like that. Yeah, well, it all makes sense. Is I think those dimensions are frequencies. I think that's right. what they are, and yeah. you know, and that 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 includes the the sound frequency, the color frequency, yeah. and the emotional frequency. Yeah. So the fourth and the fifth, if you're looking at the chakras, that's the heart and the throat. So the heart is where balance. We bring balance into the physical world which is in my interpretation i call that returning to the garden of eden i mean that's where we want to be um fourth chakra is more expressive um musical and vocal so that that's kind of where i say moving more up into the etheric states um yeah it's it's all kind of making sense to me visually so yeah yeah and i, I sort of had the idea that maybe our first second third chakra maybe each chakra is like an antenna for the different frequencies and yes so, that's another way to put it i put i say portal but you know antenna absolutely works the same it's, yeah it yeah. really changed my uh meditation sort of really focusing on the chakra like it was an antenna i guess portal is just another way to sort of another way it's a, it's like a way of an information coming in yeah yeah so I think uh, I think if we encourage folks to aim for the fourth chakra, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, that'll give us that that's the channel we want. That's where the benevolent influences reside and they're encouraging us to to, um, you know, grow in our consciousness and, and gain more awareness, perspective, wisdom, all of it. So interesting because that is Collier said that is exactly where we are. We are right now transitioning from the third to the fourth nice uh, frequency. But uh, so, do you do we have time? Do you want to do a guided meditation? I would love to do one if you okay. uh, if you think yeah. we're good for that now. So we'll do we're a little bit late. So let's do five minutes just okay. to just to get grounded and right and be right here where we are. Okay, let's start with a little ring of a bell. Pardon. There we go. We'll follow that all the way to the end. You can almost feel it resonating on your eardrum. So we'll start with just bringing our awareness into this present moment. Be aware of our immediate surroundings, right where we are. Feet on the floor, butt on the cushion, whatever position we're in, just feeling where we are in space and time right now. And with that, we're going to take three nice breaths just to begin to relax deeper into this moment. Breathing in and breathing out. Talking about these things that are a little bit scary and destabilizing you can almost feel that energy in the lower chakras of are we safe are we going to be okay all those worries let's just let that be what it is and recognize it feel where it's exhibiting itself tight shoulders tight hands facial muscles all of our fear is manifest in our body somewhere. If we can find it and just breathe into it. And when it's ready, it usually just relaxes. You can scan your facial muscles to see if there's any tension. Right here, right now. The more quiet we can become, the more we can come back into balance. And once we are in balance, we can elevate our energy. The fourth chakra is a portal or an antenna <clears throat> that represents perfect balance. It's the center point of the cross. The Rosicrucians put a rose right on the center of the cross, right where it crisscrosses. That's where balance is. So let's bring our awareness right there. It's a soft place. It's easy to reside there. like the central focal point of a spinning wheel. No matter how fast the wheel turns, that center point is barely moving. It's balanced. That's the heart chakra.
and the only way to find it is through silence. Breathing in, breathing out, observing phenomena, rising, existing, and passing. Everything's changing. So with the last minute, let's just envision we're way out in space looking down on this beautiful planet. All the stories, all the history, all the drama, poetry, art, all the relationships, governments, it's all happening right there. Looking at this beautiful planet, let's just wish it, say, may you be well. May you be balanced. May you be happy. And May you be free. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora. Until next time. Have a great week. You too.